Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today we're going to talk about square roots and cube roots. Just like division is the opposite of multiplication and subtraction is the opposite of addition, taking the square root is the opposite of squaring a number. So when we look to find the solution to the square root of 64, we need to ask ourselves what number times itself is 64? Well, it's not 1 times 1 or 2 times 2, but eventually it's 8 times 8 is 64. So our answer to the square root of 64 is 8. For the square root of 121, but the negative of that, again, think what number times itself is 121. And in this case, it's 11, since... 11 squared equals 121. Now here's what you do with this pesky negative sign. The square root of 121 was 11. Then put on the negative. Basically solve the inside of the square root first and get the 11 and then put the negative on at the end. We can follow the same logic with this plus or minus sign with the square root of 256. What number multiplied by itself is 256? Well, that is 16. Since 16 squared equals 256. Now, just like we waited to the end to put the negative sign on here with the 11, we can now put the plus or minus sign on with the 16. Now, the square root of negative 9 actually does not exist. There is no real solution. And the reason why is that there's no number that you can multiply by itself to get to negative 9. Let's look at another little mini example of this. We could have the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. We can even have the negative of the square root of 4. That would be negative 2 since the square root of 4 is 2 and the negative sign at the end. With the square root of negative 4, well, for the square root of 4, 2 works because 2 times 2 is 4. It works here with the negative of the square root because the square root was 2 and then it's the negative. But when you go to start testing numbers like 2 times 2, well, that's a positive 4. And even negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. So when you get the negative square roots, there actually is no real solution since no number times itself can be negative. Now we can estimate each square root to the nearest integer without using a calculator. We can actually use a number line to help us out with this. So we can sketch ourselves a number line. And let's put three numbers on this. In the middle, let's put the square root of 22. Or in the middle-ish. Now, think about your perfect squares around the square root of 22. On the smaller side, you have the square root of 16. On the larger side, you have the square root of 25, with the square root of 16 being 4, and the square root of 25 being 5. Now, where does the square root of 22 fall with these numbers? Well, we are about the square root of 3 away from 25, or the square root of 6 away here. So where is it that we're closer? Well, we're closer here to the square root of 25, so our estimate is going to be about 5. We could follow the same logic here with the negative of the square root of 319. Somewhere around the middle, we can put 319, and now we're going to look for perfect squares that are just a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller 
than the square root of 319. Now without a calculator this one could be tough, but you can start estimating and going, okay, 15 times 15, that's 225, so I need to get bigger. 16 times 16 is not big enough. But I have the square root of 289, and that's going to be 17. And then the square root of 324, and that's going to be 18. So when we look for the differences here between the two numbers, we're actually much closer here. We're only 5 away from the square root of 324, whereas we're about, what, 30 away from the square root of 289. So where are we closer? Well, to the square root of 324, or 18. Now, pay attention to the detail. Don't forget about the negative here. So our answer is going to be negative 18. A word problem. On a clear day, the number of miles a person can see to the horizon can be found using the formula d equals 1 and 22 hundredths times the square root of h, where d is the distance to the horizon in miles, and h is a person's distance from the ground in feet. The tallest building in Houston, Texas is the J.P. Morgan Chase Tower, standing at 1,002 feet. About how far to the horizon can a person standing on the top floor see on a clear day? Round your answer to the nearest tenth. And just two fun pictures here. That is the J.P. Morgan Chase Tower, and on the right is the view you would see from the observation deck. So how far can you see? Well, start with our formula. D equals 1.22 times the square root of H. And on this question, you are allowed to use a calculator. Next, we're looking for the distance, so that's still going to be d equals 1.22 times the square root of 1002. Then you can use a calculator to get yourself what the square root of 1002 is, and it's about 31 and 65 hundredths. We can just round to the hundredths on this one. Then multiply them. Distance equals 38.613 miles, but again, pay attention to detail. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. Well, the tenth spot is here. We look one to the right. The one's not going to round the six up, so our distance is going to equal 38.6 miles. So if you were standing on top of that tower, you'd be able to see 38 and 6 tenths miles, as long as it's a clear day. Now cube roots, well, if square roots are a number times itself equals that square root, or the number inside the square root at least, the cube root, well, we the three is a giveaway. What number times itself times itself equals the number in the square root. Well, for 125, again, you don't have to have these memorized as long as you have a strategy of how to estimate to get there. I mean, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so that's way too small. But these go up quickly. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. And you're thinking, oh, i got to get a lot bigger, but not really, because 5 times 5 is 25. Times 5 is... 125. So since 5 times 5 times 5, you get 25 times 5, and 25 times 5 is 125, the cube root of 125 is simply 5. Now, with square roots, when we had the negative on the inside, we couldn't do anything with it. There was no real solution. But this is not true with cube roots. We need to ask ourselves what number times itself times itself is 2,197. Well again, using some estimation strategies, 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. And so start there, then go to 11 times 11 times 11, that's too small, 12 times 12 times 12, that's too small, but 13 
times 13 times 13, that does equal 2,197. Now, what do we do with the negative? Well, the answer is going to be negative 13 because negative 13 times a negative 13, that's positive. But then you multiply it by another negative 13, and that makes your whole answer negative. So our answer is simply negative 13. Just like we can estimate square roots, we can also estimate cube roots. And I'm actually going to change this square root of 44, excuse me, cube root of 44, to the cube root of 49 for this example. Let's draw ourselves a number line just like we've been doing. We can put the square root of 49 in the middle-ish. Excuse me again, the cube root of 49. And now use those estimation strategies. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. That's too small. 3 times 3 times 3. 3 cubed is 27. 4 cubed, 4 times 4 times 4, is 64. So we can, the cube root of 49 falls in between those two. So on our number line, we can have the cube root of 27 being the smaller one, and the cube root of 64 being on the larger end. Now where is it closer? Well, from the cube root of 49 to the cube root of 64, we're about 15 away. Whereas from 49 to 27, we're about 22 away. So which integer is the cube root of 49 closer to? 3 or 4? Well, it's closer to 4. What about the cube root of negative 75? Well, let's draw a number line again. We already know that 4 times 4 times 4 from the previous problem was 64. So negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 will get you the cube root of negative 64 here. And then we'll have the cube root of negative 75. And then, well, negative 5, if you take negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, you get negative 120. Now, this looks backwards in the previous example, and it kind of is because it's on the negative side, just to make it accurate. Now, which is closer? Well, we're 11 away from 64, and we're a good, what, 50 away from 125, so where are we closer to? Well, negative 4, so our answer is about negative 4. That's how you can estimate cube roots to the nearest integer without a calculator.